welcome back to part two of my skate repair project. Today I'm going to be focusing on the sole of my skates. So I'm going to be refilling the holes where the screws were that mounted the blades. I'm going to be resurfacing that leather and then applying a new waterproof snow seal finish. For my supplies for this project, I'm starting out with a hammer. It's got a really small head, which is going to allow me to get uh, pretty precise when I hammer in the plugs and it's going to keep me from damaging any of the leather around it since it has such a small fine head. Now you can use any hammer that you have. I just think that this one's going to be great for my project. Next I have a round file. Now I don't have a specific number or size for you. This is just the smallest little round file I could find. It's going to allow me to get into those holes where the screws were and clean that leather up. So when I apply the glue, it's going to have fresh leather to adhere to. And finally is that glue. We have the original formula Gorilla Glue. This stuff adheres to anything. It has a great bond. It's just going to do really well for my leather on leather project. And finally, I have these little leather plugs. I actually went to a shoe repair guy and asked him to make some plugs for me. He just used a puncher and some leather and punched these out for me. He made them in a couple of different sizes so that I can fill different sized holes. I definitely prefer the little leather plugs rather than a wooden plug. Most places, most pro shops are going to use a wooden plug. It's a lot more easily available. Um, but uh, wood is going to splinter over time. You're going to have to uh, have them refilled more often. And also leather is going to expand, contract, absorb moisture, all of that the same way as your leather sole. So the leather plug is going to work the same way. It's going to function the same way as a leather sole. So if you can get a leather plug, it's a better way to go in the long run. Although wood's fine. I just, I just, I'm picky and I think leather is better. The first thing that we're going to need to do is actually to clean up these holes. Um, there, I can't actually fill them because there's crud in there. Um, I'm going to use my file here. Look, that is the splinter of an old wooden plug. So you can see what I was talking about with it um, splintering. I'm just going to go through all of these holes and clean them up and pull any old residue out of them so that they're ready for a new leather plug. There you go there's another one so that's part of the reason I prefer leather you can see right there what the wood does over time file side, uh, the rigid side of my file, and I'm going to go through and clean up the edges so that the glue that I'm going to use has fresh edges to adhere to. Okay, so the holes have all been cleaned up. They are ready for the plugs now. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my Gorilla Glue um, and we're just gonna put a couple of drops in each one. Now the Gorilla Glue is gonna expand so there's gonna be a little bit of a mess to clean up later. Just a little bit of glue in each one. It's gonna bubble up a little bit. Fix, there you go, get that one in there. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and take a couple of these plugs. There's a bunch of different sizes in here, so I'm just going to try and find ones that fit well. This one. And fill this one next. Yeah, that one's going to need new two.
Okay, there you can see all of these top five holes have been plugged. There's definitely a lot of excess glue and that's fine. You want a lot of glue in there to really fill up the extra space. I'm gonna leave these to dry till tomorrow and then I'm gonna be able to scrape any excess glue or leather off. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of the holes. The holes have all been plugged. You can see this first one that I did is starting to foam up a bit. That's really good. They're just gonna sit here for the next 24 hours and dry. I'll come back in tomorrow and clean up all that excess glue and get them ready to re-snow seal them. Hey guys, I'm back with the next step of my project. I don't have a ton of time today, so I know I won't be able to finish this, but I wanna at least get it started. Um, so the next thing is gonna be sanding the soles. So the glue has all dried. It's actually it's been about 24 hours. Um, you can see there's quite a bit of excess glue still on there um, from when it kind of bubbled out of the holes. So I have a sanding block and some actually drywall um, sandpaper. It's a medium grit and I'm going to go over the sole uh, with this to both kind of knock off that glue but also get some of this water damaged leather off and then we're going to go ahead and reseal it. So after I go over it with the um, more sturdy, um, rougher drywall sanding paper, I have this really fine 220 grit that I'm going to go over and kind of polish it up a little bit before the wax. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with that process now. Okay, it's not quite done yet, but you can already see how it's flattening out, smoothing out the sole. So not only is it smoothing out these areas where I have patched, but it's smoothing out the leather around it. And this is good. Over time, the leather is going to kind of warp and um, kind of come around the, the, where the blade mounts. And so by flattening out, I'm just giving it a fresh start um, getting rid of those warped areas so that when I remount the blade it's really nice and flat and an even surface. Okay so the sanding phase of this project is almost done, not quite. Um, I have done both scapes with the drywall screen um, and then this one has had the higher grit uh, sanding paper, the finishing paper that I did with the 220. Now I did want to tell you why I used the drywall screen. It is um, a little different than sanding paper. It's this mesh. Um, I don't know if you can see that there. It's like a mesh. And so while you're sanding, it doesn't break down the sa same way as sanding paper will. Um, the sandpaper just has this really fine sand on it there. And over time, as you use it, it'll rub off and become just paper. So since I knew I had a bit of a project, I decided to use the screen just because it doesn't leave its, lose its roughness over time. Okay, so this uh, boot has had both done to it. It's pretty smooth. I don't know if you can see that very well, but it is ready to be waxed. I am just gonna go ahead and finish this one with that same 220 grit sanding paper and then the sanding part will be done. done with the sanding part of the project. I probably could keep going longer, but I'm satisfied that I have a majority of the old wax finish off and it's ready for the new finish. As you can see, there's still some black on there. That's not going to go away unless I completely remove an entire layer of the sole and I don't want to do that. So um, this is this is normal. If you're resealing your, sh your um, soles, you can expect there to still be a little bit of black on the bottom. But the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and use some snow seal to give it a new waterproof finish. I have these one use packets of snow seal. They come in, it comes in a tub also, but since I'm not gonna be doing this over and over and over again to lots of pairs of skates, I'm just using a couple of these individual snow seal packets. I also have a rag that I don't care about, I can throw away afterwards, and a hair dryer. Um, so first thing we're going to do is go ahead and heat the leather on the sole with that hair dryer so that it, um, it, it'll just pick up the moisture from the snow seal better. So we're going to heat the sole up 
apply the snow seal with that rag and then once it dries we're going to heat it up again and it'll really um, infuse into the leather grain. <music> is just about done for me. I did end up having to put a little bit extra wax on some areas. The leather just kept absorbing it and absorbing it. And so you want to keep applying wax until it doesn't continue to absorb into that leather. That's when you know you have a good waterproof finish. You're also going to know that that notice that that snow seal is a little bit tacky even after it's dry. So you just want to take a rag and give it a good bit of elbow grease and polish it up and then it's gonna be nice and smooth and um, you know, you don't want that tackiness stuff. Well, you'll get random stuff stuck to your skates and you don't want that. So give it a good polish afterwards and then the job will be done. I do wanna do more to these skates. I need to get the, the polish fixed on these toes, but I'm gonna go ahead and save that for a future video. So make sure you hit that subscribe button down below so you can see all the videos I have coming up. And if you enjoyed this, found it helpful, give us a good thumbs up and I'll be posting a video right here, which I think you'll enjoy. <laughs>